And welcome back to Millennium TV 24. And now it's time for my guest to come in. His name is Sunez, originally from Sunset Park, Brooklyn. Hey, what's going on there? Everything is peace. <laughs> Good. Thank you so much for tuning in and being here with us. Indeed, indeed. So um, let's get into a little bit of history. Um, known as your real name is Ed Edward Rodriguez, excuse me. And um, you are 5% Nation of the Gods. Uh, Boricua, right? Af <laughs> Afro Arawak roots. We got to make sure we we say that here on Millennium TV. <laughs> but give us some background, um, Sunez, on who you are. Um, that that pretty much says it all. <laughs> um, I, I'm a that's who I am. But uh, what I do is I'm a writer, you know, mm -hmm. and um, all of it kind of comes together because of hip hop. So. Yes. I didn't really take to the fuck to the elements very well. You know, I tried them all, DJing, MCing. Those are none of the, none of those elements were good for me. Okay. So I just started writing, and when I was in college, I went to CUNY's Group College, and I started to write at the local newspaper. You know, the school newspaper, right? The mm -hmm. ticker. And I started to realize that magazines were all around the area that that I was going to school in. So eventually, as I started to write a column there, other magazines started to read it. People at magazines started to read the column that I was writing. And that was all the way back in 1994, 95. Oh. So once that happened, then I got into Vibe, you know, and then I got into other magazines and stuff, you know, and I would just hop to magazine to magazine, trying to write what I thought would be the best that I could write, you know, and not every magazine was always into that. So right. I tried every magazine possible, um, made my own magazines, and it's really the journey of a writer. And in learning how to write, you have to learn how to find out about things. So what happens is that I end up finding out what are these lyrics about? Mm -hmm. uh, what are they staying in the lyrics? And that's how I got the knowledge itself. That's how I got to know about the Nation of Gods and Nerds. That's how I got to know about that. And um, that led me to going to a law school in Mecca in Harlem and getting the knowledge itself. Right. right. I got the knowledge itself, then I was pretty good at teaching it. So I started to teach my own class there. So all these things, um, they intersect, you know? Mm -hmm. So, um, and with the school in Harlem, is that the same school, a law school in Mecca? Or is that two different? That's right. That's okay. right. Law school in Mecca. Yeah, and in you have a course that's called the Peace Course, which is P-E-A-C-E. -E. What exactly does that entail? Right. It's, um, I would say it's a, a lot of us, when we get the knowledge itself, we basically are teaching at-risk youth. That's the way we got the knowledge and that's the way we give it out, the teachings that we have. So at the school, all the programs at the school are for the youth that voluntarily come in. So I devised the course that was really trying to teach them about the oppressive world that we live in. Mm -hmm. And so I call it political education, how to deal with the outside world. But also I wanted to teach them about the culture that we were sharing, the culture that we expected them to do all they could to prove it was true, as opposed to just believe it was true and all of the sciences that we could go into, whether it was diet, whether it was uh, the martial arts, all of these things that were in my curriculum. So I called it political education and civilization enrichment. Mm, okay. And now these are the things that should actually be taught in school from elementary to high school and also college. I, I heard you stating that, you know, you wasn't, college just wasn't for you. And is it because it was lacking those that information that is what's really needed um, to motivate you? I, I completed my college degree mm -hmm. and yet I still say it wasn't for me because all the things that I really wanted to learn was using the facilities that they had, using their libraries, using their the, the connections that I had with particular professors. But all the things that I wanted to learn, I had to go elsewhere to find it, <laughs> you know? Right. And because of that, it, it was, college was a route for me to expand myself, you know? So in, in my classroom, I want them to use everything as a tool as opposed to expecting some type of education to give them the gift of a career because it doesn't really work that way. Right, absolutely. So now, you know, the, the name of the school is Allah School in Mecca. And when you hear that, you would think Islam and you oh, said you're five percenter. So what are the differences between both the five percenter and- in, 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 a, in, um, in the fastest way to say it, right? These teachings are rooted from the nation of Islam, mm -hmm. which was not teaching an orthodox Islam, 
but they were teaching a form of Islam because Allah, right, was said to come in the person of Master Far Muhammad, right? So they dealt with Islam, but Allah was a physical being. However, in their teachings, they were teaching that man is God. The original man, the Asiatic black man is God, mm -hmm. right? So one man that was in there, known as Clarence 13X, right? Who was the 13th Clarence to be in the nation of Islam. He saw it differently. And he saw that if it said that the man was God, then man would, must be God right now, supreme being, and be all under his own control in his own vein. So that man said he was Allah and he left. And he started to teach in the street and the youth were the ones that that learned with him the best and that he focused on it really becomes our biggest saying the babies are the greatest when we say that yes so what we know what people might know is clarence 13 next we know him as Allah the father and he started the five percent nation of islam so the excuse me the five percent nation of god's nurse so that's the root that i come from mm -hmm. And what we're teaching, though, is not a religion, but basically a teaching to show and prove who you really are. And when we teach supreme mathematics, when we teach supreme alphabet, these are teachings that he added on to the teachings he took and learned from the nation of Islam. So when we teach students, if we teach students at the school voluntarily, we're not teaching them to be something. We're teaching them to go investigate something to get the best of what they can learn from something. This is what we're teaching. Absolutely. So what um, should people look for when actually looking for a teacher? Um, I think this isn't just for, I think this isn't just for those who might come to a law school in Mecca or go anywhere. I think it, it stands in all regards. Mm -hmm. They should find out best what they are looking to learn. They're, the best student is one who basically can put his thoughts into questions mm. and formulate what they think, everything that they think they know, okay. work to prove that, and then find out the questions of what they don't know. Those that tend to be the best students, you know? Nice. And if they don't know that, that's the first thing I tell them, you know? And to use me as an example for that, because most students or people looking for a teacher don't really work very hard to validate their teacher. And um, I know you said you said something about the 90s. You've been a vegan since 1994. Now, a lot of people are jumping on the vegan. <laughs> yeah, 1996. We, yeah, 1996, sorry. Yeah. Okay, 96. Yeah, it was, it was steps. It, mm -hmm. it was steps. Uh, I, I got rid of uh, dairy in 1993. Mm. And since I couldn't have all these good treats, I figured <laughs> I'd get rid of pork, you know? And I wasn't a 5 percenter then. It's just that... Karis one beef song and and common <laughs> saying what type of rebel eats pork really stuck in my head so I got rid of uh, pork but then I decided to just gamble and get rid of everything else mm -hmm. I had never even knew what a health food store was right and then I found it by accident you know somebody was making fun of me and said that's a health food store why don't you go in there and I went in there <laughs> and I started to see different products and it was just a a big trial and error because the oh. vegan diet is often what people don't eat right they don't really talk about what they do thank you, you know? so exactly I, I teach that i teach more of a i always say a living foods vegan diet and i don't teach it to the students so that they do it i teach it so that they know it so that they can use it to detox and then if possible to become that if they desire it and make it a lifestyle but, um, if right knowing what we'll eat though is really the the big issue not necessarily what we don't eat. what we don't yes and that's the big problem with veganism like <laughs> right. everybody just focuses on not eating meat not eating meat and just replacing all these meals as i stated you know and it's it's we, need, we eat a lot of food. <laughs> it's not just we just don't eat meat. But let's take this back. Um, going back to the writer's elements of hip hop. You have a radio show. And shout out to S Street Media. I'm well known with them. Um, that's family over there. And um, give us some information on your radio show. And what exactly does that entail? Yeah, so I wanted... What I do as a writer... It was all the way back in 1995, I, I realized that I can't really say I'm doing hip hop if I'm just covering other people. So the only way for me to write something about an artist or write anything was if it was creative. So I said that for the writer element, which is journalism, his, being a historian, for it to be an element, it has to be creative. So I started to add poetry and prose inside of the works 
and the technical definitions of what I was detailing. So if it was a technical review about an artist and their music, I also was delivering it in, in po poetry, extended poetry, prose, and I was making the piece about the music into its own artistic work. Mm. And so that's what I mean when I say that my element as a writer is art on art and also science on music. You know, it's not just saying this song is hot, this song is cold, this song is, you know, like right. just simple adjective based descriptions of stuff, you know, real musical knowledge, you know. Absolutely. Um, and when I called the show the Power Right Show, it was because um, of really the hero to me i call the father of my own element which is bones malone um he saw a picture of me and prince powell known as marcano now um of the leftovers now and he saw us in the picture and he called us power rule and power right wow so i named the show the power right show okay and that's how it got its name nice nice and um you're also an author that's right that's right um not just articles and, and essays and stuff, but I started to realize back in 2012, when I really started to write again in the early 2010s, because I had left, I had left every magazine out of frustration of what was being covered, not necessarily because I didn't want to. So I started to write my own stuff again. And around 2012, I was at a show, a Spit Gems release party for one of his albums. and. I was talking to Napoleon the Legend, I was with F.U., I was with all these great MCs and uh, I'm talking to Sean Price and everybody's there. So, mm -hmm. And I realized it was, all I could describe it was it's some kind of renaissance here. Hmm. So I started to call it this era that we're in, in, in hip hop and the underground as an invisible renaissance, something people don't know. But because I called it that, I said, I, I decided to be the one to cover it. So the many of the books I'm writing are about that, including the one I have out now, the filtered real essays from the Invisible Renaissance, you know? And um, this era right now, since 2010, is probably, I would say, the most um, quantitative amount of quality in hip hop has ever produced. So we can argue that the 90s had the better quality of music in hip hop history, right? Kind of like a 1950s of jazz or 70s of soul or 70s of salsa. Right. But this era, this era has way more qualitative works. So I could really go through about 300 albums a year that are high quality, you know? Nice. And you also do martial arts. Talk to us about that. How did that become a, a part of your lifestyle? Right. That's a tradition that really comes out of the 5% Nation of Gods and Earths because many of my elders, they learned the martial arts. So they were learning and when we say, when elders call and we call Allah the father, it was because he was a father to many of these youth. And so they started to learn martial arts as a way to keep together and keep the unity amongst themselves and also to keep them disciplined, right? And when I got knowledge of self and I was teaching, I realized that my contemporaries were doing martial arts. And that was crazy to me because I was like, I don't want to get hurt doing a kick or anything like that. <laughs> but. I realized that many of the ways I was thinking about protecting my children were insufficient, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And also health-wise, you know? Um, so that became a tradition that extended there. So along with getting knowledge of self, I was also was training in the martial arts, you know? And our, our Seagun, Bobby Whitaker, who, who isn't a 5% of, but really like an honorary 5 percent was the one that taught all of us. Got it. And what he taught us, we extend freely to those that that are really willing to learn all right and out of everything you are a writer you um have your radio show you again incorporate all the elements of hip-hop um martial arts you're a teacher out of everything you've done what has been the most inspiring for you not for anybody else but for yourself uh it's it's difficult to say you know we talk about all of these achievements martial arts and and to me writing are really grinds they're they're things that if i wrote something incredible mm -hmm. it's because i wrote thousands of pages people didn't see so i see it differently mm -hmm. if i share a clip it's because there are hundreds of fails prior to that clip you know <laughs> so yes, I and I, you know so i keep it simple if it, and and teaching students it goes to the root of the word education, educari, which means to draw it within. I don't consider myself making a student. 
you know, they're making themselves and they were going to be what they were going to be. I just helped along. Absolutely. And so to me, it becomes simple. I, I think if I think about my greatest achievement, it's just the joy of having children because nothing has beaten that really. Nothing is more amazing than that. You know what I mean? I definitely relate. Um, Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Um, I think at the same time, all of the other stuff is, is an outgrowth of that because I think I don't think I would be a martial artist if I didn't have children. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't think I would have written with this kind of fury if I didn't have children. You know, and try to show them like a, a, a different way, like to have a vocation that you actually love. Because I didn't want them to get stuck just doing, you know, pencil pushing, you know, which is literally as a writer, <laughs> editor. That's I know, what, that's funny coming I out of a writer's doing, mouth, but. <laughs> right, yeah, I'm pushing a pencil. That's literally what I would be doing. So I think those, I, you know, it's hard to encapsulate a joy, you know. Mm -hmm, absolutely. So uh, let them know where um, they can find your book and again, where the school is, um, what, what, how can somebody get in contact right, with you? Right, right, well. The school, you know, I'm there every Thursday night, so I'll be there this Thursday night. A lot of school in Mecca is on 126th Street and 7th Avenue in Harlem. Um, all the trains go there. They're easy with A, B, C, D, 2, 3. Um, and I'm there from 7 p.m. to 10 p.m., you know, so anyone can come during those hours. And however long they can stay, I'll teach them something. Um, I can be found at Sunez, uh, S-U-N-E-Z, mm -hmm. on the Instagram studio is number seven, the number seven on Twitter, or fitting with my honorable name, Edward Sunez Rodriguez, you know, on the on the Facebook. And um, if you people DM me, they can get my books. I also have an ebook out now, The Real of 2020, um, and some other stuff. So there's a lot of stuff coming. And they can also get my paperback also from me personally, but also from Amazon. Right, exactly. That's right. Let them know. Amazon. What's the name <laughs> of the book again? The Filtered Reel, Essays from the Invisible Renaissance. Absolutely. That's right. You better sell it. Let's go. You got your time. <laughs> <laughs> but time is up, unfortunately. Soon, yes, you have been great. A lot of information was definitely provided, and we appreciate your time, your energy, and your space. Thank and you. we'll definitely be in touch. Thank you so much. Thank You're, you so much. You're welcome, Soon, yes. Thank you. Thank yes. you for watching Millennium TV 24. I'm Kim Seaver. You're taking a good look at news, and we'll be right back. Millennium TV, bridging communities worldwide. We broadcast diverse international content from Europe, 